Oh, hey, there you are. How you doing? Welcome to my studio. I'm working on something here. Why don't you come a little bit closer and I'll show you what it is. What I'm working on today is going to be an oil wash of President Abraham Lincoln. So I sketched this out here on the canvas. Uh, you might be better off drawing it out on tracing paper first and then using transfer paper to transfer your image here just to make sure it doesn't get all smudgy. Even if you do use the tracing paper and transfer your image, it's advisable to go back over with your pencil and just clean up your lines. Uh, one of my mentors and teachers, Brian Jekyll, he would always say, once you transfer your drawing, it just looks kind of stiff and stale. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to just draw right on the canvas. It gives it a little more of that free, loose, sketchy feeling to it. So I've got my drawing on here and then I sealed it with some fixative. Here's the spray fix I use. It's this Krylon workable fixative. And so what I do is I spray a coat on there uh, horizontally and vertically. I let it dry for a few minutes and I'll put a second coat on there as well. So I put at least two coats on there. Reason being is we're gonna be using solvent as we put on this oil wash. And if you don't spray fix this and you put your solvent on, you're gonna wipe your drawing away right off the bat. If you're really confident in your drawing skills, you don't necessarily have to go through these steps of drawing it out and then spray fixing it. You could just put a wash of color on there and then start lifting out your highlights. And once again, that's if you're really confident with your drawing skills. But I do find some comfort in having this map of the drawing to work off of, and that way it just makes it a little bit easier when we go to the rendering stage. So an oil wash, in essence, is using oil paint like watercolor. We're gonna be using it very transparently, and there have been some artists who've used that technique very effectively, even more of a full color rendering. Artists such as Ron DeCiani or Bernie Fuchs, and I'm sure there have been others as well. So this is something we can do in monochromatic, which is what we'll do today, is just a single color or we could do it full color. You could use this incorporated with your opaque paintings. You could leave some areas transparent, some more opaque. But today we're just gonna do a transparent oil wash. So let me show you what materials I'll be using. So I've got my drawing on my canvas panel and the panel is gonna be a little bit easier to work on than a stretched canvas. A uh, stretched canvas is just, you can still do it, but it might give a little bit too much. So the canvas panel, I think it works pretty well. So I'll be using oil paint and I like to keep them kind of warm. You can choose any color you want. My primary color is gonna be burnt sienna. And then I'm gonna mix a little bit of green with that. I have three greens here. I'm gonna experiment with them and figure out which one I want. There's viridian, terra vert, and chrome oxide green deep here. So I'll see which one I think works best with it just to neutralize this a little bit. You could use burnt sienna just by itself. You could use any color you want, but I, I kind of like those earthy tones that have a little bit of warmth to them. For solvent, I'm gonna be using Gamsol. You could use any mineral spirits. I've tried doing this technique with oil, like walnut oil. Uh, actually, I did a demo last year for my students using oil and it just got too slippery and got away from me. So uh, I'm just gonna stick with this. And I really like Gamsol, especially if you're working in a home studio where uh, maybe you don't have the best ventilation. It's, you still should have a good ventilated area to work in, but this has a lot less harmful vapors than just standard mineral spirits. So I really like that Gamsol. It's kind of expensive, but I usually go to Hobby Lobby with my 40% off coupon and get a nice big bottle like this at a decent price. To apply the paint, I'm gonna be using a variety of brushes. I'll probably start with some bristle brushes like this, and then I'll move over to softer hair brushes like this uh, synthetic mongoose hair. These are by the, the Langnickel Company. It's a Royal Sable Tech. Those softer hairs can work really well when you're trying to get some of those softer edges and softer transitions. And then I'll probably be using some detail brushes for smaller areas. So the key to this oil wash technique is more in taking the paint off than putting the paint on. You'll do both. You'll put the paint on for darker areas, but a lot of it is gonna be lifting the paint off to get your highlights. And it's really a lot of fun to work this way. It's kind of a negative way of working. Uh, so, so here are some tools I'll be using to lift the paint off. This is uh, just a cotton t-shirt I cut up into a little square. 
And this is going to be my primary tool for wiping away larger areas. And you can even get into some smaller areas with it. But it's kind of a larger tool for any details. So for details, I'm going to go over to using Q-tips, which I can use to lift out smaller areas. And this, I love this thing. This is a little rubber lift out tool. And it really can get some very detailed areas to lift the, uh, the color out and get some little, little nice highlights. You can even use the the rag here if you wanted to use the end of your brush if you don't have a wipeout tool you can wrap the end of your brush in that, that little rag and get some small detailed areas something i forgot to mention is with the drawing another mistake i've made before is making really hard dark lines and spray fixing those on areas that i might want to be softer okay so here you see this transition on his forehead from the light over to the midtone and the shadow areas. See that edge right there? You can see I didn't put any line there. If you put a dark hard line in pencil there and you spray fix it and then you're trying to get a really subtle transition over it, that hard pencil line is still gonna show through at the end, which I know sometimes with watercolor, it's fine to leave those pencil marks, but here I find it kind of distracting if you leave those sharp pencil lines where you might want a soft edge. So, um, I said earlier, you don't really have to do the pencil drawing if you're really confident with your drawing skills, but I'd say it would be good to start with the pencil drawing, but leave some of those areas out and just draw those in as you're rendering it. Okay, so I'm gonna get started here, but before I jump into this, I'm gonna do a little practice just doing a sphere. And doing a sphere is an amazing exercise whenever you're trying to learn a new medium or new technique because that really helps you figure out how to render with that technique or that medium. So let's switch over here to another canvas and we'll do a sphere. All right, so I got my fresh canvas out here. Uh, let's draw a little circle. I'm gonna just cheat real quick here. It's just for practice, so it's all right. Here's my perfect sphere. Not quite perfect, I'm sure. Okay, so I've got my burnt sienna up here and I went with the Terra Vert. It's kind of a nice neutral green already. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that in with the burnt sienna. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna to try to leave it a little bit marbled. Marbled meaning you can still see the identity of both colors in there, not perfectly mixed. Oh, that burnt sienna is pretty strong there. Maybe I should have gone with the Viridian. But we'll give this a shot. Maybe I'll switch it up for the next one. All right, and I've got some fresh mineral spirits here, the fresh Gamsol. You want it to be clean, especially when you're doing transparent work with oil. Uh, if you've got really nasty, dirty mineral spirits, that's gonna affect how the, the final color looks there. Another note on Studio Health, I've also got an air purifier here working in the background, so that should help keep the, uh, keep the air clean. All right, so I'm going to dip my brush into the mineral spirits off to the side there, and I want it kind of washy, and you're gonna have to practice and feel how much mineral spirits you want in there. I don't want it super runny, but I don't want it really thick either. Something about like that, it's, it's pretty wet. Yeah, I think I will switch colors for that next one. You can see with the bristle brush, it's leaving more brush strokes. Uh, when I switch over to the softer hair brushes, it will not leave as many brush strokes. And that's, I think, one of the benefits for the soft hair brushes. Most of the time I do my work with just the bristles, like this one here, but they're are some benefits to using those softer hair brushes. Uh, they don't leave as many brush marks. They can blend a little bit more smoothly. And they're also really good for applying wet paint on top of wet paint. Sometimes if you use a, a really coarse brush to try to layer paint on top of wet paint, it'll just lift it up. I can see that's really not quite a perfect circle there. So let me try to even that out a little bit with a softer brush here. And when you're doing this, I would start with right around a 50% value or something like that. This may be a little darker than 50%. Your surface is all also going to affect how this reacts. So if you've got a really smooth oil primed surface or very coarse, more absorbent acrylic ground, uh, that's gonna 
adjust how this technique handles as well. This is an acrylic primed panel just on cotton duct, just kind of your average canvas you would see at the store. Okay, so that's a little bit smoother there. Let me also try to put in a bit of a cast shadow for some illusion here. Maybe a little bit low, but we'll let it go for now. Okay, so you could also use just paper towels for lifting out the color, but I think that the cotton rags work a little bit nicer. Uh, they don't leave as much lint or anything like that. So you see here, I'm not putting much pressure on there. It's lifting it out. It's giving us a little bit lighter value. I'm gonna try to get a representation for all the, uh, the major types of light we would see in an object. We have direct light, we have mid-tone or half-tone, we have highlight, we have uh, core shadow, we have reflected light, we have cast shadow. Uh, the terminator is kind of along that, that uh, core shadow, right where light stops and shadow begins. So this is, doing these spheres, I really enjoy doing spheres. It's uh, maybe not the most creative work, but it can definitely help you understand how a medium works. I remember when I was a freshman as an art student and I was just learning how to use charcoal and we had to do a project like this with charcoal and it really helped my understanding of form and uh, how the medium behaves. So here I'm gonna soften that edge. Really, um, something I just heard from Steve Houston and I've kind of known it for a while but he did a great job putting it into words is all you need to master a medium is to know how to make razor sharp edges like this and how to make really soft edges and all those edge transitions in between. I may have put a little too much mineral spirits in there but it's all right. It's practice. It's really it's really good to do this before you jump on to like a final rendering like I'll do of Abraham Lincoln here in a little bit. Working with mediums transparently to me seems to be a little less forgiving than working with them opaquely. Uh, or if I was just doing this in regular solid opaque paint, you know, I could just endlessly layer light on dark and light on dark. Let's try to lift out maybe a little bit of reflected light here. You can use the brush to lift out value also. And let's try to get a little bit lighter. Let's say this is more of a mid-tone or half-tone. Then we'll get a little bit lighter over here towards the direct light side of the sphere. And then I may use a little bit of mineral spirits to try to pop in a highlight. You gotta be careful with that mineral spirits. If you get too much on there, it's really gonna start running. So here I'm having to kind of scrub to get much lighter. And if this was a smoother canvas with oil priming, that would probably lift off a lot easier. But that did pretty good. Um, honestly, I think I heard this from Steve Houston or somebody recently as well. No, it was uh, Joseph Todorovich. He said, you kind of want it to be harder to alter a value. That way you're not gonna accidentally just eradicate something you've got there. So if I have to scrub a little bit harder to get that light, that might be easier to control than if I just wiped it and it all lifted off immediately. There's a little bit of mineral spirits there. And you'll see once you do that with the mineral spirits, it's going to start eating away that paint layer. So I prefer to use less of that, then more, and I'm gonna alter the edge there. I'm gonna leave the edge a little sharper on the right, a little so softer on the left. And now I'm gonna to try to darken this core shadow here a little bit more. So here's more of that additive method, adding the color back on there, trying to get a darker value. And you can use the paint full thickness, you don't necessarily have to thin it. I'd say for that initial wash, I would probably thin it. And then if you're gonna go back on and try to darken it, then go with more of the thicker paint. You can also use your fingers to blend a little bit. This technique could also work as an underpainting for a full color painting. Uh, I've done that before where I had a really large canvas I was painting with multiple figures on it and uh, it really helped to plan out the values just working in a monochromatic fashion first before jumping into full color. Now 
This burnt sienna is also pretty transparent, so that transparent color is gonna work pretty well for this. Something like a cadmium color or like a yellow ochre or something that had more opacity might be a little more tricky to get this effect with. Maybe a little bit darker on the core shadow here. After you're working on this for a while, the paint starts to set up and maybe get a little more stiff, which is sometimes gonna be helpful. And experiment with different tools. Like this soft brush seems to be working pretty well, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll try with that bristle again. So you can do as many spheres as you like, experimenting with different colors, different brushes, different surfaces. All right, so there is our practice sphere. I'm trying to get the hang of this technique. Now I'm gonna switch over to Abraham Lincoln.